So there's a different theory of Alzheimer's related to our terrain or mitochondria. This theory says that the neuron mitochondria are exposed to all those various insults I mentioned, and maybe two or three or four of them have to come together to cause this over years and decades damaged mitochondria. When these mitochondria are damaged, these neurons require tons of energy. They're highly performing cells. They require more energy than almost any other cell in the body. And they face an energy shortage. And a gradual rerouting of metabolic priorities is necessary for them to compensate to the energy shortage. And part of that rerouting involves the appearance of these plaques and tangles that can no longer be removed properly. This theory sees, importantly, the plaques and tangles as a response of Alzheimer's, not a cause. So it's a response to the mitochondria dysfunction, and then you get your neuron loss and dementia. If this is the case, we have a target to treat, a goal, if you will, and that's the mitochondria on the left. We have to try and restore that, and that will help, hopefully, slow down the Alzheimer's process. So fasting and keto diets, in addition to restoring mitochondria, have a lot of other possible benefits in Alzheimer's. Okay, first, they elevate ketones, which is a much better fuel than glucose. Ketones produce more energy per unit oxygen and fewer free radicals than glucose. And they also circumvent brain insulin resistance, which was alluded to earlier. So the brain doesn't use glucose so well in Alzheimer's, but it can use the ketones just as well. Someone with Alzheimer's can use the ketones just as well. They also induce the expression of these neurotrophic factors, which are like the growth hormones for the brain, as was mentioned earlier. They suppress neuroinflammation, which is prevalent in Alzheimer's. They stimulate this process called autophagy. Okay, so fasting keto can help stimulate autophagy, which perhaps may remove some of these proteins if they are at all causative. And again, fasting and keto, the true aim is to restore your mitochondria. It's not about weight loss. It's not about all these other wonderful things, these wonderful side effects. It really is to restore your mitochondria because that's the main game. That's your terrain. And so you create a metabolic advantage for neurons and perhaps you can slow down the Alzheimer's. Has this been tested? Not so much, but we did perform the world's first randomized crossover trial a couple of years ago. So this trial was uh, a randomized trial of a keto diet in people with Alzheimer's. No uh, subjective or mild cognitive impairments in this group. And we just wanted to compare a keto diet with the standard of care, which was a usual diet of the patient with healthy, low-fat recommended eat, um, eating guidelines. And it was not like, uh, you know, processed fats. It was a lot of fruits and, uh, you know, sort of healthy grains and so on that we recommended. We looked at three things because what matters in Alzheimer's are these three things, cognition, function, and quality of life, particularly the last two. People with dementia consistently say that function and quality of life are the two things that matter to me the most. And we used a very powerful randomized crossover design. What does that mean? <clears throat> so we randomized people to keto or usual diet 12 weeks on either diet, we measured them at the start, week six and week 12. And then we had what's called a washout period where they crossed over and each person did the other diet. And then we did the same. That's a very powerful design because you everyone does both interventions. And the paper's there if you want to see it. What did we find? We enrolled 26 people, which is ample for this kind of a design. This is a very powerful design, does not need much uh, in terms of sample size. And uh, I should mention some of the co-authors are in this room today in the audience. And this is what happened. So red is keto, blue is uh, standard of care, usual diet with healthy eating recommendations. The cognition <clears throat> in red stayed about the same, maybe went up a touch and it dropped in the uh, usual diet group. Now that was a trend only, it did not achieve statistical significance, but it was, uh, still a decent trend. Daily function definitely improved. Uh, well, it stayed about the same in the keto group and definitely declined in the usual diet group. The, the blue lines there is normal for Alzheimer's. Cognition and function consistently decline over the months, right? This is normal. There's really no surprise there. What's interesting is the red bars are sort of holding the Alzheimer's at bay, it seems, doesn't it? They're sort of staying the same. That was statistically different and clinically meaningful. Clinically meaningful is very important. It means the difference was kind of obvious to people, including doctors. 
And the third thing we looked at was quality of life that went up in the keto group and it stayed about the same in the usual diet group. And that was also statistically and clinically significant. Those are powerful changes. These last two changes are potentially very important because they're clinically meaningful. They make a difference to the patient. A lot of statistically significant changes in a lot of research don't make that much of a difference. A lot of fancy statistics are used to make it seem like they do, but they don't. Okay, so to wrap this up, just as a garden requires a healthy environment and terrain, a healthy brain <clears throat> requires positive experiences and optimized mitochondria function. The brain generates reality using a cognitive model of the world. It does not compute, which is developed into the best version of itself through one strategy, such as devoting attention to goals and the other strategies, excellent strategies mentioned in earlier talks. But this is the one I focused on. The brain's cognitive model is nourished and sustained by our mitochondria, which can be enhanced and restored using metabolic strategies such as fasting and keto diets. The mitochondria theory of Alzheimer's views mitochondria's function or weak terrain as the main problem, and this may be a more appropriate theory to treating this terrible disorder. And in the first randomized trial to examine a keto diet in people with just Alzheimer's, we found improvements in daily function and quality of life. It's very promising, but we need more work. Thank you. Thank you.